You know, Dave, picking up on the idea of cross-boundary and, and sharing of information, what are you doing to break down information stovepipes across the military, and how has net centricity changed over time, and what does it mean today as opposed to what it meant maybe a decade ago? Yeah, it's, it's a crucial issue, and it's one that every leader, I don't care if you have information in your job title or not, every leader has to be focused on this issue. And, and I hate to say it, but it always starts with uh, data. And I've been saying for years that data is sexy, and for some reason, people don't seem to get too excited about it. But I was vindicated this year because in, uh, I think it was last March, there was an Economist magazine supplement on data. And it, was, and it said that uh, the sexy job of the year was, uh, in 2010 was data scientist. So uh, I don't know. Perhaps economists set a low bar on what's sexy, but, <laughs> but we'll, we'll work with them on that, right? And so it really is this future about if you could decouple data from the applications and systems, you have this ability to do things with a speed never before dreamed of possible. If you look at just the way the world works, right? I mean, you can, if data is available to be consumed, I can mash it up over whatever kind of picture I want, Google Earth, or pick whatever you want, and I can get capabilities to people in hours and days not weeks or months. If you don't take advantage of this Web 2.0 world, if you don't take advantage of social media and social networks, you are completely missing the point. If you think Second Life is about, you know, catching up with, a, you know, playing a game, let's say, right, then you are just missing the point because people are using Second Life to do online university teaching and business meetings and things like that. Um, if you think Facebook is about catching up with an old college chum, you are missing the point. And you need to look no farther than Haiti to see how these social networking tools were used to save people's lives. It is not just about maintaining quality of life, although that would be enough of a reason for an organization like the Department of Defense to use these kinds of tools. But in your partnership with non-government organizations and people that aren't part of your internal network, these kind of tools are absolutely crucial to getting the work done. And frankly, if you want to be an employer of choice to the net generation, this millennial, the millennials that are coming into our workforce now, you better provide the, that kind of an environment, an environment that takes advantage of service-oriented approaches and Web 2.0 and the cloud and and social networking, or you're not going to give them an environment that's going to unleash the creativity and the fire and inspiration they have. The good news is they want careers of service. So they should, you know, we should be a good target for them to come work for us and make a difference. But if you, but they're not like my parents' generation where they spend 40 years working for the company and get the gold watch. They want to be a place where they get a chance to lead and they get a chance to make a difference. If you don't think differently about how you're going to take care of them, care, nurture, mentor them, and you don't give them these kinds of tools to be able to do work at work the way they do their home lives, they won't stay with you.